How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Lowndes. Let's get to the introduction. Introduction. Whether you already feel comfortable at parties or you're a wallflower wishing you knew how to navigate a crowd, there's always more to learn about the ins and outs of socializing. Who couldn't benefit from learning how to become a better speaker or, even more importantly, a better listener? Since How to Win Friends and Influence People was published in 1936, people have been obsessed with Carnegie's six principles of social interaction. One, become genuinely interested in people. Two, smile. Three, use the other person's name. Four, be a good listener. Five, talk in terms of other people's interests. Six, make the other person feel important. But how do you actually do this? It's one thing to repeat these principles in your head like a mantra, but how exactly do you go about making the other person feel important? In a world where success is less about who you know and more about who really loves you and wants you to succeed, knowing how to get people to trust you, like you, and even love you is more important than ever. In this snapshot, you'll learn techniques that cover a whole range of social engagements, like how to be an insider in any crowd and how to work a room. Leo Lowndes distills the tactics you need to achieve these goals, and this snapshot briefly describes some of them. How to intrigue everyone without saying a word. 1. Smile. But don't smile so often that it becomes meaningless to others. When you see someone, look into their eyes and practice letting your smile spread over your face slowly, as if it's something specific in them that you're reacting to. 2. Use eye contact to communicate your intelligence. Pretend your eyes are glued to the other person's. 3. Empower yourself with your posture. As you walk through any door, pretend that there's an imaginary bit hanging by a thread from the top of the doorframe, and you must raise yourself to bite it. 4. Welcome a new person with the same enthusiasm you would a small child. 5. Don't make yourself look untrustworthy by adopting the habits of a liar, such as fidgeting or using your hands to cover your face or mouth. How to know what to say after you say hi. 6. Visualize your interactions before you have them and rehearse them. 7. To create instant chemistry, mirror the other person's mood. 8. Be passionate, even when you're making small talk and speaking about the most mundane details. 9. When you notice someone you'd like to meet, simply ask a mutual acquaintance for an introduction. 10. Eavesdrop on a conversation you want to enter until you hear them speaking about the perfect thing you can comment on. 11. Avoid one-word answers to questions, as this leaves the other person hanging. Instead, take the opportunity to tell a story or expand on the question. 12. When you introduce two people, leave them with a detail that can kickstart their conversation. 13. If you don't know how to respond, simply repeat the last few words the other person said. They'll feel like what they've just finished saying really made an impression on you. 14. After a person tells you a story, ask them to repeat it for someone who hasn't heard it yet. Set them up for success, and they'll be grateful. 15. Don't start a conversation with something negative. How to talk like a VIP. 16. Avoid asking others the question, what do you do? Give them space to talk more by asking, how do you spend most of your time? 17. When someone else asks what you do, answer in a way that relates to something you know they're interested in. 18. Don't repeat words too often. Use synonyms for common words and mix up your vocabulary. 19. If you share something in common with someone, let them finish talking about it before you rush to say, me too. 20. Whenever possible, start your sentences with you, making it clear you're speaking to the other person's heart. For example, instead of saying, where is Central Park? Say, can you tell me how to get to Central Park? 21. Listen to other good orators, and don't be afraid to borrow from them. 22. Don't bother replacing words that you think might be inappropriate in a polite conversation. 23. Before you give someone bad news, take stock of their mood and speak directly to how they're currently feeling. 24. If you meet a celebrity, don't gush. Say something specific about how their work affected you, and then move on. 25. When you thank someone, never settle for the loan, thank you. Add something in about what they actually did. Thank you for saying that. How to be an insider in any crowd. 26. 
Once a month, do something totally outside of your comfort zone to expand your horizons and your ability to talk about new, exciting things. 27. If everyone at a party works in the same industry, read up on the current hot-button issues in that field. 28. When visiting other countries, make sure you're crystal clear about the local customs. 29. Know the competitive prices on any given product, and use that knowledge when you're bargaining. How to sound like your peas in a pod. 30. Watch people like they're your dance instructor. By mirroring their body language, you instill the feeling you're from the same background. 31. When speaking, weave in imagery that relates to what you know about the other person's life. 32. Avoid simply saying, hmm, or right, when you're listening. Get more original with your empathizers. For example, I see what you mean. 33. Early in conversation, start referring to the two of you as we and us to create a bond. How to differentiate the power of praise from the folly of flattery. 34. When you hear someone say something nice about someone else, carry that compliment over to them. 35. Put compliments into your speech in an offhand way, as if they're in the parentheses of what you're saying. 36. Choose a very specific, private moment to give someone your best compliment. Make it direct and substantive, and they'll never forget you. 37. After someone does something right, Praise them immediately and ride the wave of their euphoria. 38. If you receive compliments well, people will be more excited to compliment you. 39. If you really want to win someone over, ask them what they'd like written on their tombstone. Don't mention it again until much later in a special moment when you repeat it word for word. Their jaw will drop. How to direct dial their hearts. 40. When you're on the phone, do whatever is necessary to put into your voice anything that you'd normally communicate with your body language. 41. Since you have limited options to create closeness over the phone, shower your listener with the sound of their name. 42. Smile, even when you're on the phone. People can hear your smile in your voice. 43. When you're talking on the phone to a gatekeeper, such as a secretary or intern, remember their name and use it. If they like you, you're much more likely to get what you want. 44. Start your phone calls with, is this the right time? Or, do you have time to talk? You come across as conscientious and won't launch into a conversation the other person doesn't have time for right now. 45. Record a new outgoing message every day. Make it short and sweet and put in details about when you can talk. This prevents you from wasting people's time. 46. When asking a secretary to speak to the boss, act like you're old friends with the boss by not even using their name. This is Jim. Is she in? 47. Record your calls and occasionally listen to them again. You'll notice new things you weren't aware of the first time, just as you would notice new things when re-watching a movie. How to work a party like a politician works a room. 48. When you're speaking with someone, don't hold anything in your hands that symbolizes something coming between you. Be open and available. 49. When you walk into the room, pause at the door and survey the room. This gives you an opportunity to read the crowd, and this moment of silence draws people to you. 50. Maintain open body language so that you don't scare anyone away from coming up to you. 51. Whenever you get a business card, use it to dot down details of your conversation. If you bring specific details up the next time you speak to that person, they'll take notice. 52. Track your speaking partner's interest with their body language and adapt accordingly. Are they scanning the room instead of looking at you? Time to change the topic because they're getting bored. How to break the most treacherous glass ceiling of all. 53. When someone else makes a conversational mistake, don't take notice so they can escape the shame for whatever mistake they've made. 54. Do the other person verbal favors by setting them up to feel good. If they're interrupted during a story, then when the time is right, prompt them to continue. 55. When suggesting a meeting or an opportunity, be open about what you stand to gain and what they'll get out of it. If you don't acknowledge the fact that you could benefit from the opportunity, they'll think you're hiding something. If you're asking for a favor, let that be known as well. 56. After someone agrees to do you a favor, wait at least 24 hours before you ask them to do it. They'll get a day to bask in their generosity after saying yes. 57. After you've done someone else a favor, 
Wait a while before you ask them to pay you back. This reinforces that you did the favor out of friendliness, not just for your own benefit. 58. When someone else makes a mistake, give them an out by lightly blaming yourself. If they've forgotten about an event or don't show up, suggest, I think the details I gave you were a little confusing. 59. Get the gratitude of employees by asking to talk to their boss to compliment them. Is your manager around? I'd love to tell them how helpful you were. 60. When listening to someone speak or perform, lead the audience's reaction. If they're going to clap, be the first to clap. 61. Keep score of who owes who at any given moment and give deference to the current leader. You don't want to come across as rude or ungrateful. Conclusion There are so many nuances in a good conversation, and there are as many opportunities to put your foot in your mouth as to make a meaningful connection. If you follow these lessons, you'll be more likely to forge lasting relationships and become a better listener, while also not being ignored. People will feel your attention on them, and they'll crave your attention as well, because your body language subtly communicates your power and confidence. You don't seem false because you've developed a genuine curiosity for the other person, and you're allowing that curiosity to lead the conversation. You're a social detective, picking up on clues that were always there, but that most people don't bother to spot. Everything from parties to phone calls become an arena to test your skills. It becomes a playful game you're good at, rather than a stressful social test. Simply remember these techniques to remain open, interested, observant, gracious, and confident. And you'll open doors that you didn't even know were there. Thank you for listening. If you like what you heard, then check out our channel for more free audiobook reviews.